Alright, so we're back into another Dragon Ball Super card game video. This one is kind of delayed uh, based on the title. This is going to be based on uh, Set 7, Draft Box, and as well as Set 8 that was released not too long ago, a few weeks, maybe a couple weeks from this recording. And I have a lot of rulings to go over, or at least a lot of different interactions that you should know uh, when going to this current format and maybe in the future. Of course, subscribe if you are new. I enjoy making these. Uh, if you have any other rulings or things that people should know, definitely put it in the comments below. Let's start out with the first one. One card out of the draft box, which is still pretty expensive for some reason, uh, it's Gala Cannon. And this basically is one of the first extra cards, uh, or at least super rare extra cards that was a counterplay in which this says if a battle card is played, choose one of those cards and gains uh, negative 15k for the race in a turn and a lot there's a lot of confusion uh, for two different things the first thing is the counter timing uh, since this says when a battle card is played the counter timing should be only when it's hard casted and the first counter window when something is being played with a skill ie if you tap two for a goku black or something uh, you then can respond with this this card in negative 5 15k and uh, basically ko it or send it to the drop because of game mechanics. But if you played it with the Zamasu, let's say, uh, the Zamasu will, will first have a uh, counter window right then and there for playing a card. The second counter window is when the card is actually played right after that. Uh, you can't play the Gala Cannon uh, at that counter window, only the first. Now for number two was the understanding if the effects will still go off. I know there was a con controversy, I think in the Euros somewhere, I don't remember, it doesn't matter at this point, uh, in which it was judged that, or ruled, I would say, by a judge, that the effects of uh, whatever is being played after Galakanning, even if it gets KO'd, will still, or will, will uh, not go off, that is. But because it only negatives, or only minuses 15k power, and it doesn't say, just like Desper Desperate Measures, just like a, a few other cards, instead of it being played, it is still played, the turn player auto will still go off because this will be played, on, well, usually will be played on the opponent's turn. The autos will still go off first, and then this will go off, in which if it is 15k or less, it will go to drop. If you ever do run into that, definitely remember those two things, they're pretty important. And of course, you can always refer to the Q&A, uh, just like I was saying, if it goes to zero power or below, it gets to place in the drop area. Uh, this one says, if it has barrier, you can't reduce the skill because it's being chosen. Uh, it says choose one of those cards and gets negative 15k. So if it has barrier, there you go. And then the counter window, what it is being played, it can be played in either counter window, but the effect will be uh, resolved differently. They're basically saying the first counter window I was saying, you still get the negative 15k, and this will not charge or change in that, in that case. So they're saying that you can play it, but you will not get anything uh, out of it, basically. <laughs> And it just, I guess, a quick one uh, to add on to that. This one says the uh, if a pan player plays a battle card uh, and then they get responded with the Degalic Cannon, the turn player auto will go to pan, but because it's in the first counter window, or at least the, the first counter timing, it's, it's stating that the power will temporarily get to negative 15k as it enters play. It reaches the first checkpoint, and then the pan's auto effect uh, is processed, and since your battle card is, is zero, there's nothing to actually... Uh, use the auto for the turn player. The the counter timing will still go off first, etc. The difference in this is that the pan has to sh has to see a card that's actually in play, and the counter timing from Gallic Cannon will actually place it in a drop before it actually sees that and gets it 5k and then gets the draw. The difference in uh, other cards in which it doesn't have any turn player autos, the auto is pending in which you play the card, let's say the Goku Black and draw two um, and untap one at the end of the turn, you still get that auto because there's no other autos uh, trying to resolve after that. The actual battle card auto will go off and etc. All right, that's enough for that. It's kind of a summary of counterplays and how things interact and what the timings are, but still. Next one is uh, Fuse Amasu. This is a, uh, a, I wouldn't say a hugely play, played card or uh, a frequently played card anymore, but this one says, uh, if you have three more energy, choose battle cards in your battle area with 15, 5k or more power, total energy, cost of five, and place it in the drop area. There's two things to this. One, if there is only one card of a cost of five, you can pick that as long as you have the requirements 
uh, previously, as in you have a green battle card and that it is 5k or more power. You can still do this with multiple battle cards, it just says choose green battle cards in your area until you you have that requirement. Because of the colon, which we will see this in, in the future, in the future part of this video, that is the cost and the requirement and as soon as you meet that cost, you get to play the card. A pretty frequently played card and stupid expensive is the Great Ed Bardock uh, Radius War Cry, in which if your leader card is yellow at the end of the turn, you combo this card from your hand, you play this card either turn. Now, um, the thing about this is that uh, the second auto, obviously you have to play the card, but when it is comboing within your, your turn, as in if you're going offensively and you're playing this card for two or for one if you have the King Ape, the person can respond with Jacko, this card, and choosing one uh, from the combo area and returning to the hand, or the, the the Kai, in which was pretty popular within the Nationals format and as well as just set 7 in general. Well, I guess draft box in general. And because of that, it's never, it's not in the combo area or it doesn't finish the combo anymore and it doesn't, it's, it's not played anymore. Just remember that uh, just because it's not, as long as it's not in the combo area, uh, you're, you're good. The other part of it is that if you do get KO'd, the combo phase was still there, the, the card was is still within the combo area at the end of the battle, which if he gets KO'd by like Broly or something else like that, the, the ape should be able to play right after that. If someone can correct me or prove me prove to me that's wrong, let me know. Alright, kind of going back to the basics with the remote serious bomb. If you didn't know, this one says, uh, remote, uh, wow, your opponent chooses one of their battle cards and sentences the owner's warp. The thing about this is that there is some confusion about, uh, it, since you're not choosing, as in the person um, who's playing the card, does it affect barrier? Because of the chooses, or choosing, the effect of choosing, if it says choosing, um, it, it does not affect barrier. So if we look at the Q&A here, it says if all your battle cards or your opponent's battle cards have barrier, if you have to do this card, which one uh, does your opponent choose one of them and send it to the warp? No, because it has barrier, it's being it can't be chosen by your opponent's skills, which is you, and they wouldn't send any. This one says uh, if they have um, a battle card with barrier and without, you would choose the one without barrier. You're pretty much forced. So if you're thinking about using remote serious bomb, definitely make sure that they have something with or without or without barrier first. If they have something with barrier, you can force them to choose the other. They have no other choice. They have to fulfill the requirement. The thing to, to kind of get around that, and this is kind of off topic, is if it says to place it into the, uh, like if it doesn't say choose, like place all, or um, don't, do, as long as it doesn't say choose all, you can say place all, like UI Goku or the Bardock, etc. Now I know that this isn't really played, but there are going to be some in the future that I know, you know, we might have uh, some cards that have this effect. It says, uh, at the end of the at the end of the battle, uh, you may be you may choose one green, green battle card with a Broly in his character name, and then you cost a six and you drop area and play it. So because it has Broly in its character name, it has to choose from the character at the bottom right. It doesn't say choose this Broly in its name um, versus the actual character name. If you ever have any questions about that, um, you just have to go to the ruling page, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and then go to the play sheet, I want to say, and after it loads, okay, it wasn't the play sheet, it was the play manual. <laughs> it's like, why isn't it not loading the thing I needed? Um, and we can take a look at the bottom left where it says character name, um, skill type, special trait, etc. And you can kind of understand what the card name and character name has, or what the difference are, I, I, I guess, for it. Where it says the brackets right here, I don't know if I can, yeah, it can, kind of. Um, it says that it has the brackets, it has the, it specifies a card name uh, in which the other one, the character name, has to search for the character name at the bottom right, which I don't think it has, oh here it is, so character name at the bottom right, and then this is the card name at the top, so just make sure you have that discrepancy, or know the discrepancy, and as well as know how to tell the difference. Now this one is a little bit more general than any, anything, but it's kind of a more of a arrival type of uh, requirement. If your leader card is a Vegito, which is the multicolor Vegito that makes everything blue, or Goku and Vegito multicolors. If you have a fur furious whatever, Goku in the uh, combo area, can you activate a rival red green? No, you can't. A rival checks for the original colors in the of the uh, cards in the combo area. So 
if there were any other confusion as in like can you uh, like this one this games this color in all areas or whatever in the future you have to use the original colors of the card and that does include the blue green multicolor cards you can use just one to fill, fulfill a uh, rival and that means of course uh, separate cards of red and green you can just combo those as well and now finally the interaction between topo and other cards what is this is this a $14 card okay um, <laughs> gotta look at the permanents and as well as what you're paying uh, when you actually play the card so I'm I'm saying this because when you pay this card or when you play this card on their turn as a counter and you reduce the cost of it by two, it becomes a two cost card and you're, you're paying two for the topo. Should be already known, uh, but you know, of course, the desperate measures will affect this because it is two or less. We also have an absolute release ball in which this is three or less. And of course, the focus breakthrough, which is three or less as well. All these affect uh, topo and anything that is being played for reduced costs within your hand. Next up, we have Krillin in 18, the power couple. If you didn't know already, just like God Strike, um, the second ability here in which you, when you play this card, especially for one green, you could choose one keyword skill on the opponent's battle cards in rest mode and negate it for the race in the turn. Um, even though it does say choose, it's not choosing the battle card, um, it's choosing only the, the keyword skill. So it does get around very. However, this one where it's uh, a rival and you choose, you play this card, you draw one card, and then you choose up to one of the opponent's battle cards and negated skills for the race in the turn. This one's a little bit different because it is actually choosing the opponent's battle card. It's not choosing a keyword skill or the skill uh, of the battle card. All right, let's move on to some token stuff. Uh, so we have the tokens in which, of course, everybody knows you play two tokens on their, um, their opponent's battle area. There's a number of things that actually interact with this or things that you need to know uh, when trying to build against it or play against it, whatever. The first thing is that it, since it only says 10k power, you can't combo them out. Uh, this should be known, but there are some people who still think that. But <laughs> just like the rule book says, it says that a player can only combo with cards that both have a combo cost and combo power. Uh, of course, you, there's no limit, but for tokens, if it doesn't specify the combo cost and or power, you can't combo them. And of course, a quick thing for tokens, I said this in the last video, but I'm pretty sure I did. Tokens are battle cards. It does get affected by uh, normal battle card things, but when choosing them, you can only choose things that say up to a cost of two or three or um, X or Y, you can't do two or less, three or less, five or less, etc. And this is because tokens don't have a cost. Uh, you're choosing the cost when you're saying five or less, as in I'm choosing five, four, three, two, one, with adding up to them, as in I'm going to add from zero to Five, you can then remove the tokens and KO them. Very quick refresher on that one. Real quick interaction that people were uh, kind of talking about before is the one drop baby card in which you choose one of your battle cards and uh, underneath is this card and then you do the uh, the rest of the, the requirement if you fulfill it. But tokens are battle cards. You can then use this card pretty much in any leader uh, because th this is just the cost to do it. This is the effect that happens after the cost if you meet those requirements. But in the baby leader, you can still you can still do this. You just have to actually get the baby underneath it. Anyway, if you choose the token underneath the card, it stays underneath the card and, until the card is basically gone. So if the Android 21 scheme plays two tokens on your side and you then choose the Nunu Absorb, you can then choose the token, place it underneath the card, fail to search because either you don't meet the requirement or you just don't, you, you can choose up to zero and then do it over over and over again until the tokens are gone. Another thing that, uh, another question that keeps popping up is the interaction between Android 21 Scheme and uh, Pan Ready to Fight. Of course, Pan will play, uh, well, basically whenever you play a battle card, uh, it gains uh, 5k power and you draw a card with 20k or more. But the thing about Android 21 uh, is that you actually play those tokens for them, as in you're not playing the card in the uh, retrospective or the, the reference of uh, Mecha Frieza, you're not play, the playing the card, your opponent is playing it with Mecha Frieza. I guess that's a good reference, but this one says when you play a battle card, as in the player who is playing Pan, 
but this one says at the start of the, uh, the opponent's main phase, this card, who is, uh, which is the owner, is the opponent. You play or they play two clone tokens, even though they are battle cards. Uh, it doesn't proc off Pain's effect. I think that's really about it for tokens. If you have anything else, let me know. Newly released and kind of annoying are the uh, the the cunning cards in which. You draw a card for it if you play it, and for the rest of the turn, if the turn player activates a skill that untaps a energy, you have to warp five. Now, um, uh, obviously, it's very annoying, but one thing that you need to remember is that uh, Sensu Bean has to warp uh, ten if you do the entire effect. And what I mean by that is that people kind of forget the whole sequencing for a Sensu Bean, in which you choose one of your cards, it gains five k, and then you can choose up to two of your energy and switch it to active mode. So you're paying one blue in order to use Sensu Bean in general, and then you get to untap two. Each untap has to, if your turn player that is, has to be paid with five warp or, or five cards from the drop into the warp, which means you do have to do ten if you do the whole thing. Of course, you can choose not to, you can still get the 5k, and if you're on the opponent's turn, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, a quick one about Andrew 21 Scheme, even though I know I know that was supposed to be the last one. Uh, if you play the 2-drop Khalifa, in which it says uh, you don't have to place any cards since you drop, or this turn player doesn't doesn't have to if it's in play, um, you don't have to, have to actually fulfill the black cards um, uh, auto or, yeah, the auto in which the Andrew 21 Scheme says if you play a black battle card placing the owner's uh, drop area, if you have Khalifa out and you play an overrun card or any other black card, you don't actually have to fulfill that requirement. Pretty cool. All right, coming up to the last ones now. This one is the two drop Goku from uh, the newest set or the set eight. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. It's the rare Goku. This one says you can't play this card from any other area, uh, any area with skills other than revive. Now, uh, a lot of people got this confused, is like, how do you play the card then? If it's not there, uh, the answer is just to hard cast it. Uh, that's it. Pay two, blue green, and you play it. This is just to prevent uh, squad, basically, like it, it, the uh, assembling the squad uh, two costs from deck. You can play this card, but because of this permanent, I believe um, it's preventing that. You, can, you can't do that. But a really interesting thing to remember is that uh, if we look at the Vegito, and I'm saying this one, uh, and when you activate main, you choose a Sun Goku and a Vegeta card from your deck and energy cost of two or less, negate their skills, and then place their re in rest mode, uh, and at the end of the turn, place them all cards in the, in the battle area, uh, buy this card in the owner's drop, Yeah, don't even worry about it. You can still technically, as I understand this, as you're playing this, you're negating its skills in which you're negating that permanent, and you can play them in rest mode. From what I know, that is correct. Let me know if it's not. Next one is that Trunks Brainwash says you can't evolve into other cards. This does not mean uh, EX Evolve or, uh, yeah, EX Evolve and as well as uh, Xeno Evolve. And I only know this because of the Q&A right here. You can't evolve into cards, but can you resolve a Xeno Evolve? They are um, uh, sending cards to the warp you can. What I would imagine is that EX Evolve still is not uh, in which you play the card on top of it, but since this is setting into the warp, you can't Zeno evolve. I don't believe there are any targets for uh, Trunks GT, so maybe in the future we'll have a target to Zeno evolve. So we have a couple more. The last ones are uh, the Ban Omen, in which you can play this card from your energy area. A few people were kind of arguing as far as uh, can you use her as energy. Yes, that's the whole point. By turn four, you can go ahead and warp a card and then fulfill this requirement. It's just that you lose that on two energy. Um, this one says that you choose one card from your energy, you place it in a drop area, and then you play this card, choose one of your battle, uh, opponent's battle cards, and then um, uh, one of their life and place in drop area. They create one. So if you have this in your energy and that she's one of the blue or green requirements that you need to pay for it, you can still pay for it first, um, choose one of the energy, which is hopefully not her, and then play the card. And lastly, uh, but definitely not least, is the Hatchiak SR, in which this one says the auto um, place the card in the owner's drop area when your battle, battle card attacks, uh, negate that attack. Now, a lot of people were, were thinking that this is mandatory. It's not. The simple fact that the that Bandai basically is switching the requirements or the wording for auto effects and, and the... Uh, the cost of it. So basically anything before colon is a cost and the requirement that you have to fulfill. When an auto 
So ba basically when the auto is going off, you can choose to have that auto to go off and place it in the drop area. And you're saying, like, let's say at any attack, any point in the battle, any any point in the game, they're attacking, you can say, hey, auto, I'm going to have, I'm going to place this in the drop area, and then you're fulfilling whatever requirement is um, after that, which which means negating the attack. If I am wrong on that, let me know. I'm okay with being wrong because the whole point of these videos is to spread the wealth of information and as well as to be correct about it. So definitely comment below. Let me know what you think about all of these. This is a bunch. I kind of jam-packed the last video or the video I was supposed to do and the new set eight stuff with it. Subscribe if you are new. Join the Discord. And I thank you for watching. Later.